Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our clinical biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about mitochondrial diseases, collagen diseases, and many diseases of metabolism. We talked about diseases of metabolism of carbohydrates, such as lactose intolerance, classic galactosemia, essential fructose urea, and much more. Then we turn our attention to the disorders of protein and amino acid metabolism. We talked about L-captinuria, phenylketonuria, tyrosinemia or tyrosinosis. Today's topic, porphyria cutanea tarda, is related to the metabolism of heme. Where do I find heme? In your hemoglobin, in your blood. Why do we call it porphyria? Because you have tons of porphyrins in your system. Why do you call them porphyrins? Because they are a bunch of proteins that are purple. They turn the color of your urine purple. Porphyria means purple. Why cutanea? Cutaneous means skin, because my skin will have vesicles, bullae, photosensitivity, etc. Why call it tarda? If I am tardy to the party, it means I'm late, because this can develop later in life after I acquire hepatitis C. In the next video, we'll talk about a similar porphyria that starts very early on life, and that's called congenital erythropoietic porphyria. Please watch the videos in this clinical biochemistry playlist in order for maximum understanding and retention. Porphyria cutanea tarda could be inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion or could be acquired secondary to hepatitis C. What does autosomal dominant mean? It means one parent is affected, the other parent is normal, and now I am affected. I, the offspring, have a 50-50 chance of being sick with this disease known as porphyria cutanea tarda. Here's your diet, carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. Proteins are the big ones. If you break them down, they become amino acids. To build up proteins, we go this way, anabolic. To break down proteins, you go this way, catabolic. Today, we're trying to make a big protein known as hemoglobin. If I want to make hemoglobin, what do I mean? Look at the name, it's called hemoglobin. You will need to make heme and you'll need to make globin. Let's start with globin because it's easy. It's a good old protein, requires some amino acids, lump them together, bind them with peptide bonds, and you have your globin. But how do I make heme? You need two molecules. You need iron and you need protoporphyrin, okay? How do I get the iron? It's a mineral. You take it in through your diet, for instance. How do I get protoporphyrin? You get protoporphyrin in the heme synthesis pathway from an amino acid known as glycine, which will combine with something else called succinyl-CoA. But why do we call them amino acids in the first place? Because each one has an amino group and a carboxylic acid group. How many amino acids are there? Many. How many proteogenic amino acids are in the human body? 20. Today we're focused on glycine in order to make heme, in order to make hemoglobin in my red blood cells, in my blood. Here is glycine. It's abbreviated as G or as GLY. Do you remember my video on amino acid derivatives? It's the glycine amino acid that will give me heme, which will give me hemoglobin. So let's start at the beginning. Glycine plus succinyl-CoA will give me protoporphyrin. This is called the heme synthesis pathway. And then protoporphyrin will combine with iron to give me heme. Then heme will combine with globin. Heme plus globin equals hemoglobin. You've heard of the same story before when we talked about bilirubin in my physiology playlist. Here is hemoglobin on the red blood cell. If you want to break it down, it will become heme and globin. Hemoglobin. The globin will become amino acids. When you break the heme down, you get iron and protoporphyrin. What does proto mean? Primitive. Primitive to what? To porphyrins. If it ends in in, it's probably a protein. What does porphyro mean? It means purple. Contrast that with biliverdin. Verd or vert means green. And bilirubin. Rubra means red because this is a product of destruction of red blood cells. 
Hopefully, you recall from my video on homocysteinuria that homocysteine has two famous options. It can go here and become methionine, or it can go this way to become cystathionine. Let's focus on this path. Cystathionine will become alpha-ketobutyrate and cysteine will leave the chat. Then the alpha-ketobutyrate will become propionyl-CoA or propionic acid. By propionyl-CoA carboxylase will give me methylmalonyl-CoA. By methylmalonyl CoA mutase will give me succinyl CoA. Succinyl CoA also has options. It can help me make glucose from non carbohydrate sources, i.e., new sources for making glucose, gluconeogenesis. Or it can enter into the TCA cycle or Krebs cycle to give me energy, ATP. Or it can join with glycine amino acid to give me heme. Then heme will join with globin to give me hemoglobin. Then hemoglobin will join the party in the red blood cell. All of this happens in the bone marrow, of course. Hemoglobin carries oxygen to the tissue and carries carbon dioxide from the tissue and to the lungs. Look at the beautiful succinyl CoA. It can enter into the TCA cycle to give me energy. It can give me glucose through gluconeogenesis or it can give me heme. Let's talk about heme. Let's make heme. Heme synthesis pathway. First, you need to understand that a molecule of heme looks like this. It's like a wheel. There is a core in the center of the wheel. That's the iron. Hopefully, it's the ferrous state. Otherwise, you will have met hemoglobinemia. We do not want this. We want the normal hemoglobin with Fe2+, plus because Fe2 carries O2, oxygen. That's the core of the wheel. How about the rim? The outer rim is made of porphyrin. Oh, so you get the rim and you get the core. Combine them together, you have the wheel called heme. Combine it with globin, you have hemoglobin. Okay, let's synthesize the rim. Protoporphyrin. How do I make this? What are the raw materials? You need glycine amino acid, you need succinyl CoA that we just talked about, and you need vitamin B6 as a coenzyme. Coenzyme to whom? To the enzyme delta ALA synthase. Synthase, synthesis of what? Of delta ALA. Delta ALA, amino levuronic acid. Wonderful. Then by delta ALA dehydratase, it becometh porphobilinogen. If it has the word Billy in it, you know it's going to be related to the liver, right? Keep that in mind because of the association between liver disease and porphyrias. Next, by an enzyme called porphobilinogen deaminase, which will be the subject of an upcoming video, you do not want to miss my video on acute intermittent porphyria. Because if you can diagnose this early, you can prevent your patient literally from going mad. All by a very cheap test that costs almost nothing. But of course, most doctors will be unable to diagnose these patients because most doctors are doofuses. And that's why you need a medicosis in your life. Anyways, hydroxymethylbalane is here. By an enzyme known as uroporphyrinogen 3 cosynthase will give me uroporphyrinogen. And this enzyme will be missing in a disease that we'll talk about in the next video called congenital erythropoietic porphyria. Then I have uroporphyrinogen 3. By uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, D means what? Removal of what? Carboxylate. Oh, remove carbon dioxide. Oh yeah, remove a carbon dioxide. Then what? I have copropyrinogen 3. This enzyme is missing in today's disease. Porphyria cutanea tarda. Then the coproporphyrinogen 3 will become protoporphyrin. That's the rim. Join the rim with the core, you have the wheel. Join the heme with the globin, you have the hemoglobin. Is this ferrous or ferric? Ferrous. What do you call the enzyme? Ferro. Chelatase. Chelate the iron, i.e., remove the iron from your system and put it into something useful, like your hemoglobin molecule. See, biochemistry makes perfect sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Porphyria cutanea tarda. Why tarda? Because it can happen later in life. I could yield a normal life until my 50s, where I discover that I have hepatitis C. Then, thanks to the hepatitis C, I acquire porphyria cutanea tarda, which means it happened later in life. It was tardy to the party. Why cutanea? Because it affects my skin. It makes my skin photosensitive. And I will explain why very soon. Next, why porphyry? Because it can make my urine purple. And I will tell you why soon. This disease does not have to be acquired. It could be inherited in an autosomal dominant fashion. It runs in families. 
Problem. Deficiency of the enzyme uropurfinogen decarboxylase. Therefore, uropurfinogen will not be converted into copropurfinogen 3. Which means, if the deficiency is here, anything before the block will go up but anything after it will go down. The accumulation of uroporphyrinogen 3 in your system is not fun. It will be metabolized into uroporphyrinogen 1, which will be metabolized into copropyrinogen 1 instead of copropyrinogen 3. All of these doofuses are toxic to the liver. They trigger a liver injury. A liver injury for years and years and years, if not decades, increases my risk of cirrhosis, which then increases my risk of liver cancer. It's a chronic injury, which increases my risk of mutations. Next, look at this. Porphyrin, porphyrin, porphyrin. Accumulation of these porphyrins in the bloodstream will eventually reach the skin, because the skin also has blood vessels. In the skin, these porphyrins absorb ultraviolet light and this ultraviolet light will change them, and they will change your skin to make it photosensitive skin. Vesicles, bullae, anytime you get exposed to sunlight. Moreover, Mr. Europorphyrinogen 3, porphyrinogen, after it gets exposed to light, will change into porphyrin instead of porphyrinogen. Porphyrin, a protein that is porphyro, that's purple, it will give your urine a characteristic purple or red wine color. That's the cheapest test to diagnose a porphyria. But it does not tell you what type of porphyria this is. If you want to know the type, you gotta order an enzyme assay or genetic testing. And hopefully now it makes sense that hepatitis C is related to porphyria cutanea tarda. What are the factors that make the disease worse and make the photosensitivity worse and put more burden on the poor liver? Iron therapy. Let's say that I have anemia for some reason. Maybe because I cannot make him because I have porphyria. So doctors gave me iron, which is okay. However, iron is putting more burden on your liver because you know who metabolizes everything? Uh, the liver. Does anyone remember hemochromatosis? Oh yeah, it's a burden on the liver. And if I have tons of iron running around, it puts more pressure on the bone marrow to try to make more protoporphyrin. If I have tons of cores of the wheel running around, I need to manufacture more rims in order to fit them into the wheel. But can I manufacture more rims? No. Every time I try to manufacture more rims, I end up accumulating uroporphyrinogen 3, which is toxic to the liver, which turns your urine into purple and toxic to your skin. And that's why iron therapy is an exacerbating factor. Estrogens. Estrogens affect the liver big time. And I've talked about this in great detail in my obstetrics and gynecology course. Hepatitis C is an exacerbating factor for porphyria cutanea tarda. You don't say and alcohol, of course. Because who will have to metabolize alcohol? The poor liver. How can I manage these patients? If sunlight causes skin problems, try to avoid sunlight. If iron overload is a problem, let's remove some iron from your system, phlebotomy. And for some reason, chloroquine or hydroxychloroquine tends to help patients with porphyria cutanea tarda. All of these are not solutions because there are no solutions in life, only trade-offs as Dr. Thomas Sowell said. You know what else is a trade-off? Not watching my cardiac pharmacology lectures. That's not the best trade-off for you. You can learn about medications used for hypertension, medications used to treat angina, arrhythmia, hyperlipidemia, and much more by downloading my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. The two most important organs in your body, heart and brain. Let's talk about neuropharmacology, anti-epileptics, antidepressants, antipsychotics, anti-Parkinsonian medications. You can learn about them by downloading my neuropharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you'd rather watch these courses right here on YouTube, click the join button, choose the highest tier to gain instant access to more than 300 premium videos right now. Please subscribe, smash like, hit the bell, support my channel here or here, go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.